fuck you telling me, nigga? The fuck you telling me, nigga? I'm the only nigga over here doing something right, nigga. What's up, nigga? You bitch ass, nigga? What the fuck you talking about? Watch what I'm doing, you bitch ass, nigga. I don't preach, nigga. Shut all that shit the fuck up and do something, you bitch ass, nigga. We all get shot, nigga. What's up? You want to get shot, nigga? Let me know. I'll shut your whole guy down, you bitch ass, nigga. Don't fucking test me, nigga. Fuck everything you stand for, you bitch ass, nigga. See? That's right. That's east side for you. You fake ass nigga, you bitch ass nigga, fuck your god 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 nigga, fuck that word is cut. Yeah, we setting up out here for everybody that can hear this microphone. We setting up out here to bless, bless this community with the mighty word of the Most High God, which name in the Paleo Hebrew is Yahweh. Khan in the Paleo Hebrew is Yahweh. Khan, are right, we gonna bring the mighty word out of Yahweh as it pertains to the Israelites that are in captivity in America? Okay, there's plenty of people here right now. And they, and they got force-fed religion. That's what happened. You got force-fed religion. So now our people is burnt, toe up and toe back, because we put our faith that Christians try to push on us. But we know Hamashiach Yahweh Shai is from the tribe of Judah. Khan? Khan. So now that we know the truth of the Bible, we come out here to wake our people up, which consists of the so-called blacks, so-called Hispanics, and so-called indigenous natives. And we bold with it. We come out wherever we're called to and wake the world up. What's standing before you is brothers and sisters that done been through it in this world. We done been where everybody been. We done tasted defeat. We done tasted the, uh, the bitterness of this society. But then we came back to the law, statutes, and commandments. Con? We came back to them. So we out here for the Hispanics, the so-called blacks, the so-called indigenous Native Americans and anyone else who's of the seed of Jacob. When we bring this mighty word out, you're gonna find out if it resonates with your spirit. You're gonna find out if what you've been taught is a lie. You're gonna find out if the word is the truth tonight. Con? Oh. All right. Let me get a reader where you at. Uh, We're going to go into the wisdom of Solomon. We're going to spend a lot of time in the wisdom of Solomon. Come hear the words of the Lord. Come. Come hear the words of the Lord. And see, no one's ever told us that we're going to be the rulers of the world. That's never been told to us before. Let me get wisdom of, Sir wisdom of Solomon, chapter 3, verse 8. Chapter 3, verse 8. Time, King. Take your time. All praises. All praises. All praises. What's going on, brother? Come here to work. We got that mighty word that bring healing. This ain't no religion over here, y'all. This is God's chosen people. If you believe that you could possibly be God's chosen people, this will be the spot you want to hear. You don't always see something like this. When this come around, it might be once a lifetime. But our people are waking up. You see these brothers with me? We all woke up. All right? This ain't no this ain't no play, uh, fairy tale religion. This is the mighty word of God. Come? Come. All right, when you got that king, let me know. This is the wisdom of Solomon, chapter 3 and verse 8. Bring it out. They shall judge the nation. They shall what? They shall, they shall judge, judge the, the nation. nation. Why would we need to judge the nations? Because the nations are wicked. That's why you got COVID. That's why you got all this crap. That's why all our people want to do is get high and drunk because we burn. All right? It ain't, a, it ain't a hard thing to figure out. We all gone through it. How many people out here have somebody killed, put in the, put in the penitentiary system for a decade? 
I got a brother doing 19 years right now. 19 years. All right? Go ahead, start for the jump. They shall judge the nation and have dominion over the people. Dominion over the people. If you don't want dominion on this planet, then you tripping. Because right now, the white man has dominion over this planet. Come? Oh. That's why they running it the way they have it. That's why they stick us in the hood. That's why they only want to pay us a small amount of money. That's why we got to hustle hard. All right, we got somebody trying to turn it up. Come on, Come on, Hey, man, respect this Bible coming out. Respect this Bible coming out. Respect this Bible coming out. Look, show him, show him. Hey, you see what's happening here? Come on over here. Come on over Turn that down. Turn that down. Turn that down. You see that? The mighty word of God coming out and then this shit happened. Yeah. Come on. Come on, man. The word of yeah, turn that down, man. We out here bringing out the mighty word of God. You see how it go down out here? All right, man. We see how it is. Come on, right, we gonna Come here. The word of the Lord. Lord. See, that's why the heathens run this world. There's nothing righteous about that at all. Nothing righteous about that at all. All right, we're going to bring this out. See the evilness. You see the wickedness. It's all around you. Come hear the words of the Lord. Forget that evil wicked stuff is playing in your ears right now. This That's wickedness. Happen. This is what's going to happen to the wicked. Bring that out, up. It's the wisdom of Solomon, chapter 4, and verse 18. They shall see him and despise him, but God shall laugh them to scorn. God shall off. Turn. Oh. He's pissing the hour off. He might not even live to see another day. And they shall hereafter be a vile carcass and a reproach among the dead forevermore. You're going to be a reproach. You're going to be a reproach. The most high God. We're bringing it up, though. Fill it up. Yeah. We bring yeah, it up, turn that off, man. Yeah, video him. Video him. This is what I'm this is what it's all about. The word of God ain't respected. We hold the code. Keep going, keep going. All right, man, see, that's what it's all about. The word of God ain't respected. The word of the word of the most high God in this world ain't respected. An Edomite can come out here and turn it up in our own hood. In our own hood. All right, so we already told you we're going to judge these nations. Nothing but a straight devil. You guys got a devil amongst you. But this is what we're going to do. We're going to take holiness oh, as a hero. Straight devil. Semi-red devil. Look at him. Oh, Look at this devil before you. Straight devil. Straight devil. Straight devil. Lord Invincible Shield. This is the wisdom of Solomon. Chapter 5 and verse 19. He shall take holiness for an invincible shield. Right. And you know what? This is a prime example. Anyone out here that's from the that's so-called black, Hispanic, or a native, I'm telling you right now, these folks don't care about the word of God. Y'all got to get this word of God. Without it, you're going to die. We're out here to tell you that everybody out here will not listen to the word of God. They're going to die. Period. Hey, the mighty word of God is coming out, and they turn the music on over the mighty word of God. That let you know who's holding ground out here. We holding ground out here for the Most High God, Yahweh, Bahashim, Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai. Yeah, there ain't nothing cool about that. There's not a damn thing cool about it, huh? There ain't a damn thing cool about it. Nah, nah, nah. Wow. Video take that guy. Wow. Incredible. Incredible. Incredible.
Man, that's terrible. That's terrible. That's terrible. Wow, bro. Gotta call you what happened. Stop your mind. Everybody's 13. Look it up. Look at it again. Jacob, have I love? But Esau, Esau have I hated. Esau, have I hated. That's right. 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 Hey, right, y'all people need to pick a side and ride, bro. Pick a side and ride out here. Pick a side and ride. Ain't nobody tripping on nothing. Hey, y'all people need to pick a side and ride, bro. Pick a side and ride out here. Pick a side and ride. Ain't nobody tripping on nothing. The fuck you telling me, nigga? The fuck you telling me, nigga? I'm the only nigga over here doing something right, nigga. What's up, nigga? You bitch ass, nigga. Talking about. Watch what I'm doing, you bitch ass nigga. I don't preach, nigga. Shut all that shit the fuck up and do something, you bitch ass nigga. We are getting shot, nigga. What's up? You want to get shot, nigga? Let me know. I'll shut your whole guy down, you bitch ass nigga. Don't fucking test me, nigga. Fuck everything you stand for, you bitch ass nigga. That's right. That's Esau for you. Let's keep it up. You fake ass nigga, you bitch ass nigga, fuck your god nigga, fuck your god nigga, fuck your god nigga. I rise to provoke the prophets of the murder and the murder. I rise to provoke the prophets of the murder and the murder. Fuck your god nigga, fuck your god nigga, fuck your god nigga. It out, man. That word is cut. That word is cut. Chapter 5 and verse 7. We wearied ourselves in the way of wickedness and destruction. Yes, we have gone through deserts where there have been no way. But as for the way of the Lord, we have not known it. See that? The way of the Lord, we don't know it. Because we wouldn't allow this. Israel would never allow this. We would have already got moved out the way. You see what I'm saying? So we know that when wickedness is out here, bro, you, the first thing you got to do is know how to handle it. When wickedness is out here, the first thing you got to do is stand where you have a time. Oh! Time. So this is what's going to happen, bro. They're going to see this wicked. They're going to see the wicked in the world. It's going to have its destruction. Go ahead, Doc. This is the wisdom of Solomon, chapter 4, and verse 8. They shall see him and despise him, but God shall laugh them to scorn. And they shall hereafter be a vile carcass and a reproach among the dead forevermore. We put that on the wicked right now. Most high, destroy the wicked. Come! The most high will destroy. We don't got to lift a finger and do a damn thing. The most high will destroy the wicked. Come! And he'll be a what? He'll be a vile carcass and be dead forevermore. Threatening and all that. When the prophets of the Lord came out in the old days, even in the Bible when they went to Antioch, they had to, they had to deal with devils. We in Antioch in today's day dealing with devils. God, I pray. Now watch this. 
if any of us were to ever pass digging out this truth, this is the truth. This is the wisdom of Solomon, chapter 4, and verse 14. For his soul pleased the Lord, therefore he therefore hasted he to take him away from above the heathen. See, if the most I do take us away, we do pass us because our soul pleased the Lord. God! God. So, hey, whether we live or die, the most high got us. God! God. I'm going to read it again. The wisdom of Solomon, 414. For his soul pleased the Lord. Therefore, hasted he to take him away from among the what? The wicked. Oh. Big man, 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 and the world shall fight with him against the unwise. Fight against him against the unwise. Is it wise to run around threatening to kill people? No, it ain't wise. Read it again, Art. His severe wrath, he sharpened for his sword. And the world shall fight with him against the unwise. That's right. The Most High and with Israel, we, we come together to fight against the unwise. That's what the Bible says. So, Yahweh Shai is standing right here with us. Ain't nothing gonna happen unless you allow it. Now watch this out. Before we make a move, every move we make, your house ordains it. Done? So this is what the wisdom of Solomon 6 and 3 said. The wisdom of Solomon, chapter 6 and verse 3. For power is given you of the Lord and sovereignty from the highest who shall try your work and search out your counsel. And that's what he does. We ain't doing this for any other reason but to wake our people up. You feel what I'm saying? Hey, did our people come stand with us when the Edomite ran up? Hell nah. Hell nah. They listen to the same devilish music and do the same devilish shit. But we still give a damn about him, huh? No. Because we was in a fallen state at one time. We was running around trying to trying to cause problems. We was running around acting an ass. It's nothing new to us out here. Nothing new to us. Bring this out again, King. The wisdom of Solomon, chapter six and verse three. For power is given you of the Lord and sovereignty from the highest, who shall try your works and search out your counsels. Now he's trying our works out. Did we not just get tried right now? Oh. Show that. Show that little thing that's going on over there. Came over here like, because you know men of, the, men of the Lord ain't just going to strike him down. But a fool's mouth should receive lashes. But guess what? Yeah, how will we reserve that for him? Oh. God, God, God. So, you know what I'm saying? This is what it is. This is what it do and what it don't do. You know, every breath in your lung comes from the most high. Hey, every, every, hey, if you're fearless, that's a good thing. But if you're unwise, that's a bad thing. And it's unwise to provoke the prophets of the most high and the most high. You be wise to be patient and just peep game. That would be the wise thing to do. Come, come, bring it out. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 12, and verse 36. But I say unto you, that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account therefore. You hear that? Every idle word. You can't sneak nothing past the most high. Get from the jump, king. But I say unto you, that every idle word that man shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. For by, for by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. See, when the Most High's word goes out, it don't come back void. You got to be judged for everything you speak. Con? Con. You got something, Mark? You want to bring something? All right, God, God. We're going to stay in the wisdom of Solomon. Mike, when that dude come running back here again, make sure you let my son know get the hell out the way. Because if we got a mother on stop, we're going to get Isaiah 14, 21. Isaiah 14, 21. Come on, we're going to get that, King. Right. And let's tell you, hey, 
Anyone who's out there, come on over here and hear this word. Don't let this loud music be the reason why you don't come here to word of God. That's right. Come here this word of God. All right? Come here the words of the Lord. All right, this is the wisdom of Solomon, 6 and 18. And just like we stay firm, we're going to stay firm in that wisdom of Solomon. And he says, and love is the keeping of her laws. And the giving heed unto her laws is the assurance of incorruption. So we keep these laws so we don't get corrupted. It can't nothing come over here and corrupt this. We stand firm. And Yahweh, Bar Shem, Hamashiach, Yahweh, Shah. God, you ready, King? This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 13. Salak, chapter 14, or verse 21. Prepare slaughter for his children, for the iniquity of their fathers, that they do not rise, nor possess the land, nor fill the face of the world with cities. For I, for I will rise up against them, saith the Lord of hosts, and cut off, cut off from Babylon the name and remnant and son and nephew, saith the Lord. God, the Most High is the one that's ordained everything, and he's the one that's all protection. He's the one that's going to deal with anybody stepping outside. But this day was ordained. It was ordained. Of course they're going to get rubbed wrong. That's the way it goes down. But we still stay posted in the cut. God? God! Let's go ahead. You know what? Uh, our people over there, they act like they can't make a uh, couple of footsteps over here. So we're going to bring out this edification for us. For us. Come here, the words of the Lord. Yeah, yeah, con, con. Yeah, man, and see, listen, hey, hey, I would understand why somebody don't have faith in God. It doesn't take much in this world to, to feel like God had let the world go. Matter of fact, that's exactly what he did. Give me Job 9.24. You got something, Mark? You got something, we'll get that too. But yeah, man, the world was handed to the hands of the wicked, all right? The government is destroying us. Everybody, of course everybody's pissed off. Of course nobody wants to hear about this. They just want to get their pockets, right? Let me get that money. Let me get what I want. You know what I'm saying? But we're telling you that the Most High God, this is a test. This is a test, Israel. We're being tested right now. All this is under the lens of the Mashiach. And when he come back, he's going to hold you accountable. Bring it out, Ock. This is the book of Job, chapter 9, and verse 24. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. The earth is given to what? The hand of the wicked. That ain't hard to tell. He covered the faces of the judge thereof. If not, where and who is he? God, if the Israelites were ruling this, none of this foolery would be happening. But we ain't in rule. What we're doing is trying to find a select few to come into the kingdom. That's why it's ran this way. That's why the streets are full of garbage. They're selling us garbage. The music is garbage. The spirit is garbage. Everything that the Most High is upset with, that's going to have its end time. God, it's only a duration, y'all. What you got, Ock? This is the book of Ezekiel, chapter 37 and verse 9. Look it out. Then it said he unto me, prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, thus saith Yahweh power, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these things, that they may live, that they may live. Now look at this, all this poonery going on, you got strong brothers standing here who truly love you. You think somebody love you when they snitch you out and you do a bid in the pen? Look at this, man. You got people right here representing the Most High God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The God, the power of Israel is right here, right now. That's why, you know what, you can't be mad when this shit goes down, when martial law pops off. When all this shit is cracking off and somebody pop you in the back of your head and shoot you and kill you over this bullshit out here. It's bullshit. The only real thing is the law, statutes, commandment, and Christ. Con, oh. there's nothing else. What's up, sis? All praises, all praises. All right. Come here, the words of the Lord. Talk to him, my boy. Get my 
Come hear the words of the Lord. This is for you, black man, Latino man, Native American Indian man. Come hear the words of the Lord. This is not for the Edomite, the red man, the white man. Come hear the words of the Lord. You are the children of Israel, black man, Latino man, and Native American man. Come here. Hey, we was all fools in this world. This ain't nothing new. We all been, we've been in the penitentiaries. We've been in the jails. We got families in a mafia. We got all this crazy shit going on. All right? This ain't nothing new to us. We out here to wake our people up. Now, now see, I'm going to tell you straight up and down. As we serve the Most High God, the Most High God serves us. He serves a plate for us in front of thine enemy. Hey, the music, hey, you want to turn the music down for God, but you work for the police. Ain't that something? You ain't so hard now. What happened? What happened? How come you ain't threatening the police now? Hey, you want to turn the music down for God, but you turn it down for the police. Straight up. Threatening to shoot people. You threatening the cops? You threatening to shoot the cops? Come on now. Let's bring this word out. Hey, the word of this Bible ain't never going to stop coming out. That's right. You know, that's a damn thing. Yeah. Damn thing. You want to turn the music down for the book right. stop it. Here we go. Not the Israelites. Huh. God, God. Yeah, praise the Lord. All right, uh, this is 2 Timothy 1 and 12. Right here, I got it for you. This is the book of 2 Timothy, chapter 1, verse 12. I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. You hear that? We're not ashamed of the word of the Most High God. We didn't come out here starting nothing. We didn't run up on nobody telling nobody this, that, and the third. We came out here trying to bless people. Come on. Straight up. Let's get it again, all right? Come on. 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 12. I am not ashamed, for I know who I have believed. Who do we believe in? The Most High. High. Hamash Yaki has been sent by the Most High for the lost 12 tribes of Israel. Come on. And that's what we're out here for, to wake our people up. Because they caught up in all this wickedness. All right? People threatening to kill your life over nothing. Over us bringing the word of God out. That's how bad it is. We out here bringing the word of God out, and it's going down. Yeah, I mean, we right here bringing it out. You got something, King? All right, go ahead. This is the book of Luke, chapter 8, and verse 5. A sower went out to sow his seed. And as he sowed, some fell down by the wayside, and it was trodden down. You hear that? We're trying to sow the seed of the word of God, and it's getting trodden down by others who have other purposes in this world. Go ahead. And the fowls of the air devoured it. And the fowls of the air devoured it. Just like if some vulture swooped down and snatched the food out of your hand. And some fell upon a rock. And some fell upon a rock. That means when this word goes out, your heart is too hard. It won't receive the word. All it wants to do is threaten. Threaten to shoot you. Threaten to hate on you. Start talking shit. Turn the music up hella loud. Put, flip the bird off to the whole family. Disrespect little girls. Disrespect a woman out here. No shame. No shame at all. And as soon as it was sprung up, it withered away. Hey. Some of this word is going to reach certain people, but it's not going to last. It's going to wither away because there's too much sin in the world. Because it lacked moisture and some fell among thorns. See, that moisture is the word of God, Con. If the word is called the living water, and if you don't bring the living water out to your people, it's thirsty. It's a drought out here. It's worse than a drought. It's like evaporating and sucking the life out of our people, God. Oh! And thorns sprang up with it. That was a thorn that ran up on us. A straight thorn. That's right. And sprang up with it and choked it. And choked it. Did we get choked or did we stay firm? Stay firm. God. And other fell on good ground. Now, some of this is going to fall on good ground. You see that sister right there in the car with her phone? That's good ground. Let's give her a hand. Come on, come on. We praise the most high God. 
and sprang up and bear fruit and hundredfold. You see that? A hundred people will be with us next time. You understand that? We out here about 10, 10, 11 deep. Next time we'll come a hundred deep. Oh. Read that again, huh? Line them up. This is the book of Luke, chapter 8, verse 8. And other fell on good ground and sprang up and bear fruit and a hundredfold. See that? Everybody out here, that seed fell on good ground. We're dedicated to this. You're putting your life on the line coming out here. You know why? Because the world was handed to wickedness. Come? So if you come out and shine the light in the dark, what's going to happen? The darkness is going to try to zip that light out. Come? Oh, praises. Beautiful precept. Beautiful. Come on, y'all, Charlotte. You got precepts. There ain't no reason for us not to be shooting them out. We got to put a fully automatic clip right now and get to dumping. Yahweh is with us. You feel me? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's get Revelations 3 and 9, soldiers. Pull Revelations 3 and 9. Hey, just like the Holy Spirit came down when Christ was baptized. And hey, did y'all know Christ was a black man? Did y'all know Christ had woolly hair? Christ was a black man with woolly hair and they killed him just like they kill us now. All right? So the Hispanics, the so-called blacks, and the indigenous, we got a history of being killed. And that's why we out here. We so destroyed, we don't know what the next step is. We're telling you what the next step is. Come back to the law, statutes, and commandments. God, oh. what's going on, brother? Right, we bless, all right? Here, hear this mighty word for you, King. Yes, sir. Yeah, you see that picture right there? That's a damn lie. That's a damn lie. The scripture, the, yeah. We're going to read to you what Christ looked like, all right? Because that's a damn lie right there. And American pride, that ain't nothing but a false bo uh, bologna sandwich they fed you, all right? That's all that is. You ready, King? Here, this is for you, King. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 1 and verse 12. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me. And being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man. The Son of Man. We're talking about Christ who came to the earth for the who? Israelites. Who did he come for? Israelites. One more time. Israelites. Come on, Yashala. He came for who? Israelites. All right. Bring it out. One like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot and girt about the path with a golden girdle. Okay, so he's set up. Now let's, now let's take a peek at what he's looking like. His head and his hairs were white like wool. Like what? Like wool. Like what? Like wool. He's got woolly hair on the head. Hallelujah. As white as snow. White as snow because you know what? When the Mashiach was on this earth, he knew that he had to pay the price, didn't he? He knew it. He was stressing. He was stressed out. He said, Father, if this cup could be passed for me and I don't have to drink this and I don't have to die for these hard-headed Israelites, if we could do it any other way, let that happen. Go ahead, Ock. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. His eyes were a flame of fire. This is a serious man doing serious business for a serious people. And his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace. All right, fine brass burning in the furnace. You're not going to get white out of that, period. That's a done deal. We're done. That's off the table. We don't even have to talk about that no more. Go ahead. And his voice as the sound of many waters. Now, does my voice sound like a little girl or does it sound like it's wrong? wrong. Because your Mashiach is speaking to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That's who's speaking through us. God? God. And he had in his right hand seven stars. Seven stars. Let's go. And out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword. What is a sharp two-edged sword coming out of his mouth? It's the word of God cutting all the wickedness. That's just like if you ever, when you were growing up, you said, oh, I know you feel shame. Oh, he burnt you. And the only thing he did was say a word. That's all he did was say a word. So this Bible is cutting anything wicked. Say that again, Ock. And he had in his right hand seven stars. And out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword. And his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. His countenance, the way he was presented, was shining like the sun. You can't even stare at the sun. You got to turn away or put some shades on. Huh? Uh. That's how powerful our Lord and Savior. Yeah, that's religious system, man. That's right. See, when these resonate and you feel that, sis, that's when you know what's happening. Even though they try to shut it down with some garbage, we don't allow it. 
and he laid his hand Salak. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. He's alive forevermore. But see, our people are all caught up in these religions, so they don't realize the one that came to save us is never going to die. He's never going to die. He already gave his life and came back, and now it's a wrap. So now he has the power and authority. Give me all power is given to him, King. All power is given to him. So we need to put some uh, respect on his name. Con? And hey, his name ain't Jesus. In the Paleo-Hebrew, it's Yahweh Shai. Con? All right, and his father's name is Yahweh. But we got our languages took from us. Let me explain. When they brought it, brought the uh, so-called they call black or Negro, when they brought them over on slave ships, they took everything from them. They took your language, they took your name, they ripped it out of you. They just, just they tried to destroy you, and the Bible tells us that. Then what did they do to the natives over here, brother? It's, thank you. Yeah, let's get Deuteronomy. Let's get the old good original Deuteronomy. Verse 2868. Yeah. Feed them, right? You got some, Mark? Yeah. All right. Oh, you give me that, the all power given to him. Come, on, come. On. You ready, King? All right, just the mighty word of Yahweh. We got quite a bit to bring out tonight. This is the book of Hebrews, chapter 4, and verse 12. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and jo and spirit salak, and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. You know what? He knows what you're thinking. He knows what you're feeling. He knows what you're about. You can't escape it. So the best thing to do is align with the divine and get in this righteous word. God? God. And once you do that, then you're going to start to see more. And then uh, let me get Psalms 111, verse 10, King. What you got, Art? All right. Now, we, now listen. When we talk about power, listen. These cops had the power to shut that dude down. He was playing loud music. Cops came and shut it down. But he wouldn't turn it down for the mighty word of the Yahweh. So we need power. Well, Yahweh did that for us. If you really want to know the truth, the Most High did that for us. Watch this. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 28, and verse 18. And Yahweh Shai came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now, why do we have to go to all nations? Do you know, sir? Do you know why we got to go to all nations? Because we were scattered. That's right. This word is only for the Israelites, which are the so-called Negroes, so-called Hispanics, and so-called Native Americans. We've been taught it's for everybody. It ain't for the wicked. It ain't for the evil. They, they're to be destroyed. Even our own people who want to be with those heathens, they're going to be destroyed. That's, That's right. why we're out here, to let them know, hey, don't don't follow old boy over there with the AK-47 gold necklace. That ain't going to work for you. That, that's got to end. At some point in time, that's a done deal. Uh, There's going to be another brother with an AK-47 necklace, and he ain't going to have it. Uh, there might even be a little tiny little gangbanger, 16 years old, pull up right on the side, you pull one right in your melon, and you're done. And you're how will you send that? So you say, Bring it up. Israelites. That word is for Israelites. Let, give, give me show his word under Jacob. Give me that. Right. And that's why we're oppressed and on the bottom because Yahweh said, you know what? If you're not going to keep my commandments, you're not going to worship me, and you're going to do what all these heathens do, then you know what? I'm going to turn you over to them. You see what I'm saying? You don't want to listen to me. You don't want to do what I say. I'm a, Listen, let's say you had a woman yeah. and she was cheating on you. It means you locked the door. Excuse my French, but get up out of here. Get up out of here. You think the most high's a punk? Our God ain't no punk. He told you his eyes was red with woolly hair and he ain't playing. He looking like Samuel Jackson. You feel me? He done with the garbage. And that's why this COVID shit is hitting so hard right now. Everything's hitting hard. And you gotta make a decision. You can keep playing with it. Why are people like black people? Huh? Why are people like so-called black people? 
because this is the there's different ones just like listen listen they're not the same people you got hamites and it's the seed and i'm, I'm gonna need everything you have on the seed give me what you got you got that king all right it was pretty sad i'm gonna answer that question this is the book of psalms chapter 147 and verse 19 he showed his word unto Jacob. Unto who? Unto Jacob. Now, Jacob is Israel. That's 12 tribes, and it's a seed. Watch this. When you have a baby, that's your child. But if you get with a woman and she already has a child, that's not your child. So he's only showing his word to his child. Okay. That's it. He showed his word unto Jacob, his statutes, and, ju and his judgments unto Israel. Unto who? Unto Israel. Now, if we've been hidden. I need Psalm 33. We've been hidden. They've hid who we are. That's why we don't have the same names. I got a Spanish last name. I am from Spain. I'm from Jalisco, Mexico, where we spoke a dialect of Hebrew. But they came here and conquered us, and now we got a different last name, and they try to speak us what? Speaking English and Spanish. Those weren't our natural languages. That's right. You got it, Art? Oh, God, God. Yeah, we're going to bring that out, too. Hold that, King. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 83, verse 1. Now watch this. We're, we're in the state we're in because of this. Keep not thou silence, O God. Mm -hmm. Hold not thy peace, and be not still, O God. For lo, thine enemies make a tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. So David is praying to God. He said, hey, there's people that hate us, hate you, hate your laws, hate you. Please, don't stay still. That's like you going to your big brother and say, hey, Depot trying to punk me outside. Don't don't just sit on the couch. Come on. Yeah. They have taken crafty counsel against thy. Oh, sorry. They took crafty counsel. Crafty. That means they're plotting. You, we all come from the hood. People plot on people, don't they? Yeah. Uh -huh. All right. They see you rolling around and they want that. They gonna go back to the lair and plot on you. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people. Against who? What? Against thy, thy people. people. And that's who? Israel. Right and consulted against thy hidden one. We're hidden. We don't even know we're Israel. Why? Because they took us from our land, or they took over our lands, took our name, took our language, and then painted that thing and said, that's what we're talking about. Is it coming clear? Easy. Not hard. Right? Come. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation. Let us come and cut them off from being a nation. Another word is let us cut them off from even knowing who they are. Let's cut them off from being a family. They got an inheritance, but if we can hide the will, if we can hide the inheritance, then they'll just be running around here, you know, burnt, like our people are. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. Hey, ain't none of us out here yelling Israel unless we're woke. We're out here because we woke, now it's our job to do what? Wake up our people, come. exactly. Let our people know, that's exactly what we out here for. You got a question, King? What's up with Jewish here? Okay, they faking imposters. Answered it. Let me ask you a question. If that car is is a uh, uh, black and that car is blackish, but it ain't black, they ain't Jews. They Jewish. They took on our customs and basically stole our heritage. All right, he got a precept. This is the book of Revelations. Chapter, chapter 2 and verse 9. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty. Listen to this. But thou art rich, and I know the blasphemy. The what up? The blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not. Say it again, Art. Them which say they are Jews and are not. See, so we got to come out here and read from the Bible because if we let them tell the story, it becomes his story. All right? It's his story. Anybody could go up and lie and tell you anything and then oppress you on the top. Why, why don't we say Jewish if it's in the Bible saying anything? The Bible says Jew means Judah. This right here, my brother's name is Yahawadah. That means Judah in the language. Christ came from the tribe of Judah. That's and then, we already told you he had wool-like hair, right? Yeah. Those people walking around with wool-like hair over there? Yeah. Hey, 
Right, right. They might got a little curly lock, but see, you don't have to have that to be an Israelite because we've been scattered all over the world. So if you have a baby with another nation or something like that, she might just have some cool little, uh, some Billy D waves or something. You feel me? Yeah. All right, what's we go? Oh, these guys got something real quick. You ready? Out? This is the book of Joel, chapter 2, and verse 27. And you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am the Lord your God, and none else. And what? And none else. And what? And none else. All together. And, and none, none else. else. For everybody else, that ain't your God. He's the God over everybody, but we were chosen to have his laws, statutes, commandments, and the dominion over the earth. But because we didn't keep his laws and commandments, this thing got resurrected. American pride got resurrected. Heathens got resurrected so that we would be jealous and come back to him. All, All right? right? Yeah. So, Israel, right? So, where did Jews, where did Jews come from? Okay, so that's the Ashkenazis. We got something for you. They're not black. The Bible is telling you that Judah is black. Where the real Jews come from then? Okay, so the real Jews coming out of Israel, right? Right, right, right. Coming out of Israel. Now that land of Israel is big. You're asking about them fake Jews, it doesn't take nothing. Listen, you see how that dude got a police SWAT uh, vest on over there? You see how he has that on? Yeah. Hey, you can buy those online and roll up on somebody and act like the police. That's, That's right. how simple it is to be an imposter. Now. That comes with power. If somebody sees that, or you see somebody hit the lights on you, you're like, oh shit, oh man. So that's what they've done. They took in our Bible, right? And they claimed it for themselves and took our land and claimed it for ourselves. Hey, give me that, it will be in the, occupied by the Gentiles. Okay, Con, we got one for you. This, this right here, we'll kind of put it over the top for you. All right. Right. All right, you got it, King? This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 68. Bring it out! And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Okay, so anything that happens to us, the Lord did it. He said, and the Lord shall do this, right? From the top, King. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Now, in the Bible it says Egypt, but if you translate it into Hebrew, it means bondage. That's so, right. he's saying, I'm going to bring you into bondage with ships. Oh. Who came over in slave ships and went into bondage? The so-called Negro, so-called black. And they did it to the Hispanics. They took That's us right. over to Spain. They That's took us right. to the Caribbean islands. They've done that to the indigenous people. Go ahead, huh? And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships by the way whereof I spake unto thee. Thou shalt see it no more again. And there you shall be sold unto your enemies. Oh. You shall be what? Sold unto your enemies. Now is the Bible lying? Man, sister, you soaking this up like a sponge. Brock, Brock, can I touch on that one? Yeah, here you go. Okay, okay, check this out. Bring that out again, John. You know what and the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. Okay, look at that. You hear? He shall bring us into Egypt again with ships. How did our people get over here? Yeah. In ships, right? Cargo slave ships. We're packed on top of each other like sardines. You know, we had uh, urine, we had feces, we had minstrels. We had uh, each other throwing up on each other. But look, the word Egypt, that's what we want to look at because we can pass up a word real easy and not know what it means. Egypt simply means bondage, and I'm going to bring that out. I'm going to let you know what Egypt means. This is the book of Exodus, chapter 20, and verse 2. I am the Lord thy God, which I brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Out of where? Out of the land of Egypt. Out of where? Out of the house of bondage. What, from the top. I am the Lord thy God, which I brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Look, what he's telling you, that name is synonymous for bondage. Right. So we are in bondage because we are taken captive by our enemies. And now we dwell in the land of our enemies. Right. Read that again from the top. And the Lord, this is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 68. 
And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt Where? again. Where? And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt. Egypt just simply means bondage. We're here in America. We were brought over here on ships. And we are now in bondage under the, our oppressors. We, we look, we're in the hands of our enemies. We're not free. We're under the oppression of our enemies. That's right. And they, they stay on top of us. And they, they're going to continue to stay on top of us until what? Until we're delivered by the Hamashiach, Yahweh Shah. Oh, read read right. that one more time. And the Lord shall bring me into Egypt again with ships by the way whereof I spake unto thee. Thou shalt see it no more again. And there you shall be sold unto your enemies, to who? unto your enemies, Free. for bondmen and bondwomen, Free. and no man shall buy you. No man shall buy us. Look, we, what's that? Look, right, Con. Look, we came over here in slave ships, right? What, what, so, when it says redeem, when, when it says buy, what that means is redeem. No man is gonna be able to get us out this captivity that we're in. We need the Messiah to come back. Right. That's why when we say, oh, um, when Christians be like, oh, I'm saved, I'm saved. No, you're not. You're not saved from anything. Right. Because we're still over here in the land right. of our captivity. Right. Uh, we're still over here being oppressed. Right. We're still uh, over uh, here out in the street acting like niggas shooting right. our brothers down and right. killing our brothers. Right. Right. Hoeing out our women. Right. Hoeing out our children. Right. We're still we're still in the land of our captivity. We're not been saved. No man has been able to redeem us from this captivity. We have Martin Luther King. He didn't do it. Right. They killed him. We right. had Malcolm X. He didn't do it. Right. They killed him. Farrakhan, he ain't done nothing. Right? Nah, nah. We've had plenty of so-called black leaders come up, and not one of them has been able to get us out of the oppression that we're in. Right, right. They're right, killing right, them. Right, right? right. So that's why the Bible says no oh, man is going to be able to redeem you. Right? We have to wait for the Messiah to come and get us out of this captivity. Right. And he's given us space to repent. So if, right. you, if you're walking in uncorrectly, then you got to align that thing. And if you if you don't have the fear of the Lord, you won't do it. You'll just continue doing the same thing. Now, he he put... Hey, we all had to start somewhere, Con. Yeah, yeah. Oh, hey, hey, hey. That, that's part of it. We're admitting it. Yeah. I want you guys to check something out and, and look. We have to listen very carefully to what's being brought out. Check this out. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 1, verse 3. The ox knoweth his owner, and the ass his master's crib. That's right. right. But Israel does not know. My people does not consider. Look, the, what the Most High is saying, the ox knoweth his owner. The ox knoweth his owner, and the ass his master's crib. But my people, my people, Israel, they do not know. They don't consider. Read that again. Slow, slow form. Isaiah, chapter 1, verse 3. The ox knows his owner, and the ass his master's crib. But Israel does not know. My people does not consider. Look, you got a lot of people out here walking around thinking that they just the average black man. Yeah. Are they a nigga? Are they a negro? Are they, uh, uh, a spick? Or whatever they want to call us. That's what the heathen call us, but we're Israel. Come on. Right. Come so, on. Look, the ox knows his owner, and the ass, the uh, ass is a donkey. Con. <laughs> look, the ass, the donkey. Yeah. I'm sorry. The ox knows his owner and the ass his master's crib, but my people, they don't know, they don't consider. And we're Israel. So look at all these people running around here doing the, the works of the devil, acting like they're the heathen, and we're not the heathen. We're, right. we're, uh, we're set a, apart from everybody else on the face of the earth. That's so, right. Okay, let, let me show you who we are according to the Bible, but look. Bring that. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7, verse 6. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God has chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. No. Look, look. To himself? He has chosen us above what? For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God has chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Read that again. The, for thou art an holy people Separate. unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God has chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Above some of the nations. Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Above few of the nations. Above, above all, all people, people that are upon the face, face of the, of the earth. earth. 
Oh. Look, 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 hey, that's right. That's you. That's right. What, 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 Con? What are Israelites? What are Israelites here? Look, Con, Con. We're above all nations of people upon the face of the earth. We're not below. We're not beneath. We're on top. But something happened to us. Con, Con. You're right. You're right. We were kings and queens. Okay. Um, I'm gonna bring the precept out. Uh, this is the book of Hebrews, chapter 12 and verse 6. Okay, now listen to this. If we were such a special people, what the hell happened to us? I'm trying to figure out. Right? So okay, okay. Watch this. Now, are, are your children special to you? Yeah. Will you whip that ass? Hell yeah. Now go ahead. Go ahead. For whom Yahweh loveth, he chasteneth. Read that again, Ark. For whom Yahweh loveth, he chasteneth. And scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. You hear that? So if he receives you as a son, best believe you're gonna feel his hand. Have have the black, Hispanics, and Native Americans felt his hand? There's no way around that. All you gotta do is just go to the their own school system will tell you that they came here and conquered us. Yeah. So so now what do we gotta do? What's the plan? Ecclesiastes 12 and 13, King. Yeah. Yeah. This is the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear Yahweh and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. This is the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear Yahweh and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. So hold on a second, Let me grab that thing. Now this is my specialty. And I'm going to tell you why. We playing with it if we don't do what he says. Now listen, you could have a woman, you could have a man, you could have a kid, you could have anything around you, and they can give you lip service all day. But he said, let us hear the conclusion. And you pick that up quick. He said, well, he, he could put the top on it. This is it. The conclusion is keep his commandments. But you ain't going to keep them if you don't fear them. Now how do we come to the fear of Yahweh? How? How does that work? We read this Bible and it tells us, this is what I did to you for not doing what I said. Now, just like a father, if a father's like, listen, you remember that time I put you on restriction and I didn't let you go outside for a week? You hated that thing. You hated that thing. Do you want that again? You know how many times the Israelites been on restriction? Seven captivities. You want me to name them? A captivity is like in America we're in captivity. We fill the prison systems. We work the jobs that don't pay. We over here on all kinds of antidepressant drugs. We all tore up. We're in captivity of the mind and physically in a country. Now watch this. When the Israelites fell the first time, we went into a Babylonian captivity. We went into Egyptian captivity. Remember in Egypt, who was building them pyramids, brother? No, the pharaohs had the Israelites. Okay. You go look at the side of those walls, you're going to have people looking Hispanic and Negro on those walls. Not white men. You're not going to see those so-called Jew-ish. You don't see no Jew-ish on the sides of the walls in Egypt. Look at that, man. He, he getting you receiving it. So, so keeping his commandments. Now check this out. If you don't know what his commandments are, how can you keep them? Right. So what we got to do is we got to get inside the Bible. Now, listen, I didn't read nothing until I got an adult. I was a dumb little kid in the hood, didn't know a damn thing. I, there was nobody even checking to see if I knew what the hell was going on. I was lost in the sauce. But if you pray to the Lord and you're meant to get this, like today, this ain't no coincidence, sis. And you know what? They try to scare us off. We got threatened to get shot when we was out here. Right here. And we right here for you. You know why? Because you have a love, y'all. Now, don't let this seed fall on stony ground. I gave you that little connection thing. Reach out. And any question you have, listen, brother, you asking the right questions. You want to know what, and what about this and what about that? Give it up. Ah. Woo. Hold on a second. Hold on. There's going to be a one third. And there's going to be a two-third that's going to get destroyed. So so here's what's going to happen. Yeah, the ones that are listening and, and choose to do it, but if you don't do it, he'll scoot you to the side and bring another one. But he ordained us. So I'm going to tell you, if you weren't ordained, it ain't for you. 
But with you sitting here listening, there's a damn good chance by the grace of God that you was one of those children. But he's going to chastise you and get you right. You got to be able to hang on tight. Uh -huh. Yay! That's what it's about right there. He's been with you this whole time. Every one of us. Every one of us. Come on, are you ready? You got something on? This is the book of Romans, chapter 13 and verse 11. And that knowing the time that it is high time to awake out of sleep. Whoa. But now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. Now, the Bible is just sweet, sweet to your ears. Because you're like, man, when is this going to end? How many do we need? We just need a third. That's it. Hey, put it this way. Hey, hey, you hey, you know how the world is. There's a lot of them going to die. Why do you think we out here? We set up camp. We got our wives. We got our kids. We out here. Because we want our people to have a chance. That's right. This gospel got to go to the four corners. Hey, it ain't just the black, Hispanics, and Native Americans. He spread us out in everywhere. Right. There's Israelites looking like uh, Bruce Lee. You see what I'm saying? This Israelites looking like, uh, yeah, there's all kind of stuff going on. We don't know who they are. It's the seed of Israel. Time, time. All right, what's, what do we got? We got another one? Yeah, uh, Brock. Yeah. I'm going to bring out with uh, 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 precept, the four, the four precepts to what uh, Mike just brought out. Gone, gone, gone. So you got no more. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 29, and verse 10. Bring it out. For the Lord hath poured out upon you the spirit of deep sleep. The what? The spirit of deep sleep. Read. And hath closed your eyes. The prophets and your rulers, the seers, hath he covered. So the, the Lord put us in the deep sleep. Yeah. So, you know, we're running around trying to be Christians. We're running around trying to be Jehovah Witness, Baptist, uh, Seven Day Adventist. Uh, all those different religions that they got out there because we didn't know who we are. Remember, we just read the ox knows his owner and the ass is master's crib. But my people, they do not know. They don't even consider. So the reason why we don't consider and we didn't know is because this. Bring it out from the top. For the Lord hath poured out upon you the spirit of deep sleep and hath closed your eyes. The prophets and your rulers, the seers, hath he covered. And the vision of all is become unto you as the words of a book that is sealed. So the visions in that in that Bible, this book that he has right here, it's become as a like the book was sealed. We couldn't read it, we couldn't understand it, right? Yeah. Which men deliver to one that is learned, saying, Read this, I pray thee. And he says, I cannot, for it is, for it is sealed. So look, we got uh, scholars out there. We got uh, all kinds of people to go to seminary school, Bible college and stuff. They they read it, but they don't understand it because they teach the same thing. They teach the, the, that. Con, con, con. Look, that, that white boy on that picture right there, that's what they teach you. They, they go to seminary school to learn that. They go to Bible college to learn that. But that's not who he is. That's not what he looks like. According to Revelation chapter 1, verse 14, says his head and his hairs were white like wool. His eyes were red like the flames of fire. And his feet were like brass as if they burned in the furnace. He's a very dark skinned man. Read this. And the, and the book is delivered to him that is not learned, saying, Read this, I pray thee. And he said, I am not learned. Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as his people draw near me with their mouth and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me. Look, they're saying, I love you, God. I love you, and I praise you, and I worship you, but they don't even know who he is because they were placed in the deep sleep. Right. It's not until now that our people are waking up. They're waking up to the truth. And let, let me show you something that we always skip past. Give me uh, uh, John 8 and 32. So you're gonna learn today what the truth is according to the scriptures, the, the uh, oracles of the Most High, the very words that came to us by the, uh, the most high power. So let me know when you got that. So today, what you got, you guys are going to wake up because the church, if you've ever heard, how many of you guys know what the truth is according to the Bible? The law. Okay. We're going to bring it out right here. So you, you're, going, you're going to learn what it is today. This is the book of John, chapter 8, verse 32. Bring it out. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. What truth? What is it? 
Okay, let's go to Psalms chapter 119, verse 142. Right now, see, right now you guys don't know what the precepts is. So you'll see us jumping back and forth in the Bible. That's because it's called the precepts. And what, 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 what precepts? Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to show you what that is. Go to, um, let me show you what it is. Let me show you uh, this verse, and then we're going to show you what a precept is. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 119, verse 142. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. Read it again. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness. Never go in. And thy law is the truth. What's the truth? The law. Look, anybody can tell you anything, but if it ain't coming out of the oracles of the Most High, he says John 8 and 32, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free, right? That's what's going to make us free. It's going to free us from sin. That's it's going right. to free us, free us from this bondage. And if we keep it perfectly, it's going to free us from our enemies in this land. So Psalms chapter 119 verse 142 says, uh, you got that too? Yeah. We got Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. The law is the truth. That's what the law is. I've been to church for many years and had no idea what the truth was until Yahweh began to wake us up and come back to the people who we're supposed to be. I don't have to uh, be like the ox. I don't have to be like the ass. Not con not knowing, not considering who we are. We're Israelites. We're all, everybody standing here, you guys standing there, we're Israelites according to the Bible. Con? The, they're deceivers. That's exactly what I'm really, hey, what they would like you to do is put some money in that plate and keep him rolling. Huh. We want to wake our people up because this Bible has all the answers. Let me show you something, okay? We went with the precepts, right? First, we went with John chapter 8, verse 32. And you, no. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So. This, this is going to show you what the precept is, but I'm going to explain it even deeper. So we jump from uh, John 8 and 32, we jump up to Psalms chapter 119, 42. It's going to explain to you what the truth is. So a precept will lead you and guide you to another script to, to understand what, what it is. And that's a precept. Read. Uh, so Psalms chapter 119, verse 142. Uh, thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness and the law is the truth. That's what the truth is according to the oracles of the Most High. But look, we, wanna, we don't want to skip by righteousness. What is righteousness? Do you guys know what uh, righteousness is according to the Bible? Time, but we're going to get it. Psalms chapter 119, verse 172. He's going to tell you what righteousness is according to the script. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 119, verse 172. My tongue shall speak of thy word, for all thy commandments are righteousness. Is that from the top? My tongue shall speak of thy word, for all thy commandments are righteousness. All the Lord's commands, his laws are righteousness. That's how, that's righteousness. Okay, so I'm going to show you. Give me Psalms, chapter uh, 119, verse 104. So now we're going to know. Is there any other way to read the Bible or get understanding other than through thy precepts? So now that we know we have to go, read one section, jump to a whole nother section, back to another section just to get the understanding of, of the word. You got that? Okay. Here we go right here. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 119, or luck. Chapter 119, verse 104. Through thy precepts, I get understanding. Therefore, I hate every false way. Through thy precepts, I get understanding. Therefore, I hate every false way. Look, there's no other way that you can get an understanding unless it's through thy precepts. So I've been to church all these years, and they never told me what the truth was. But now, since... Now, since... Uh, what's that? Come, come. Hey, so brother, you asked us, uh, you asked a question. How come? How come um, they never taught us this in church? How come they never told us that we are the Israelites in church? So this is the book of Judith, chapter five and verse twenty. It says, "Now therefore, my Lord and Governor." If there be any error in this people, and they sin against their God. So what does God saying? 
is, hey, if these people are off here, if they're not following the laws that the Most High gave them, right, if there be any error in these people, he said, let us consider that this shall be their ruin, uh. and let us go up, and we shall overcome them. But if there be no iniquity in their nation, let my Lord now pass by. Let their Lord defend them and their God before them. Woo. And we become a reproach yeah. before all the world. Oh, so why they don't tell us? Because if we know who we are and we get back to keeping these laws, statutes, and commandments, they're done. Right. The, the, who did the preacher learn from? Exactly. We went to exactly. seminary school and learned from the white man. Right. The white man taught him. That's why the prophets out here giving the word. That's why the prophets out here teaching the Bible the way it's supposed to be taught. Because our people have been destroyed for lack of knowledge. Hey, the first. Second commandment is happening right now. We please in the most high by loving our brother. Come, come. Uh -huh. So we're gonna bring it. I'm gonna show you why the, the churches they don't show you uh wh why they're teaching you wrong. And you're gonna learn it right here when you pull this up. You got that? Oh, okay, come. So look, we're going to go back to what the precepts is of the Bible because you wanted to understand what it was. When we read Psalms chapter 119 verse 104, it says, Through thy precepts I get understanding, therefore I hate every false way. So look. You see what the Bible does? Look, that's why he laughing. Because it's right. real. Huh? So, so, so look here. Psalms chapter 119 verse 104. One more time. Through thy precepts I get understanding. Therefore I hate every false way. So there's no other way to come to it unless you get it through the precepts. So let's let's jump back so you you won't forget this. This is how a precept works. First uh, John chapter 8 verse 32. And you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. But what is that? We need to know what it is, so we need to get a precept. Right. Psalms chapter 119, verse 142. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and the law is the truth. Con. Con. So let me show you something why these churches ain't teaching you right. Bring it out, Doc. Bring this out. This is the book of Malachi, chapter 2, and verse 7. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge, and they should seek the law at his mouth. For he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. But ye are departed out of the way. Ye have caused many to stumble at that law. Look, all these pastors, how many times you be in the church and they ain't bringing out no law? Right. What they bringing out is when we have the next Sunday barbecue. Right. We need uh, building funds to buy new speakers. We need uh, to fix our, right. our parking lot up, you know? They, that was that time. They're not giving you the time. They're not giving you no law. They, you know, and, and read that. You got that? Listen carefully, y'all. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge, and they should seek the law at his mouth. Look, when we sitting in them pews, or when we standing out here, I can come with any and everything else, Con. But look, we need to be bringing the law out of our mouth, because according to Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13 says, uh, this is the conclusion of the whole matter. Hear Yahweh and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. One more time. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge, and they should seek the law at his mouth, for he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. But ye are departed out of the way. Ye have caused many to stumble at the law. Look, they caused many to stumble at the law because you got these pastors up here. Look, this is some basic commandments that we have to do. That we have to have, right? You see this what I got on right here? This ribbon of blue with these black fringes. You see this beard on my face? Those are commandments God. that we have to keep. How many times do you be in the church and you see a pastor with fringes on or a beard on his face? If he has a beard on his face, he don't know what it's for, why he's wearing it. You know? Man, it was a Hey. Hey. 
You you hook me up with your number, man. I'll make sure you get some fringes. Yeah, he got a card. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 111 and verse 10. Hold it, King. He's going to tell you how to get understanding. Every brother up here got some understanding, but we got the formula on how to do it. I mean, I ain't trying to get precepts. Go ahead. Watch this. Right. He's permission to get This is the book of Psalms, That's chapter 111 right. and verse 10. The fear of Yahweh is the beginning of wisdom. Uh huh. And a good understanding have all they that do his commandments. Woo! His praise endures forever. Did you, did you understand what he just said right there? There's some key words in there that, that you really have to pay attention to. The fear of the Lord is the what? Beginning. The beginning of knowledge. And a good understanding are all they, not some of us, all they that do his commandments. So, look, if we're not doing his commandments, it's some basic things. Look, friend is on. I got a beard on my face. I'm not bald headed, you know. Well, whatever, whatever you can grow, grow. whatever you can grow. But my bro. son don't got one either. Uh, somebody give me a. A uh, lot of indigenous natives can barely get a couple. Of all right, last thing before I go, right? Yeah. Okay. How in hell do you find a precept? I'm, I'm going to show you. I go over the Bible and start reading. Yeah. Yeah. Look, look. What he just, what he just read to you. Uh, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, right? And a good understanding. Listen, a good understanding are all they. To do his commandments so there's some things that we can't do according to the scriptures that uh, are doing his commandments first we got to get a beard on our face we got to get fringes on we can't be eating pork we can't be eating shrimp crab lobster we can't be eating a dog read that again and the five books of moses the, yeah the five books of moses is where you need to start at to get the the commandments of the of your house so when we do that when we start keeping them then you get a good understanding Hey brother, so not you know that you're Israelite, you know that you're a Hebrew, okay. right? Now that you know that and you ask him, when are we going to get up out this captivity? Yeah. Are you ready to start following the commandments of the Most High? No, I can't. All right, all crazy. That's my ability. I'm okay, so yeah. now you, you, you ask, um, how do you start, learn precepts? Yeah. This is the book of Romans chapter 10 and verse 14. 10. It says, how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? Now, he's going to hold that right there. The question you ask is, how am I going to figure this thing out, yeah. right? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher, right? So... You gotta be taught, yeah. right? All of us, we didn't just yeah. um, roll out of bed and like, oh, yeah. you know, we yeah. had all of the understanding. We, we each was taught. Now, um, I, Barack here gave you um, the card, gave you the information. Yeah. Bro, reach out and link up with us. Yeah. Call the brother, right? If you sincere about this, Right, and you really ready to start walking this thing out oh, yeah. because now you know who you are. Right now, you know what the most high requires of you. Mm -hmm. Because what's the whole duty of men is to fear the most high and keep his commandments. Come on. right? So, we have to start doing it if we want to get placed back into our rightful position on this earth as the chosen people, as the most high nation above all other nations. We have to be, we are that. Um, that peculiar people. We are a royal priesthood, right? We got to start walking back in our in our royal garments. Why we go smash some bullshit churches? Yeah. Because right, yeah. shut the fuck up. Yeah. 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 Well, basically, that's how raw it is. Now, now we hey, want to give the you some fire. Right. Right. What does it say about the two witnesses? Right, they right. come in and, and fire proceeded out of their mouth. This this word is fire. Right. When we speak it, it's like fire coming down and burning up these damn devils. Right. That's why when we came out here, the first thing they want to do is start blasting music because it's like fire that's proceeding out right. of our mouth. Right. And it's burning right. their ass up. Right. When we get in front of these preachers, we start burning them up with this word. They cannot contend with it. Right, the word is what the word is. So all we gotta do, our duty. Oh, okay, yeah. come. On. Now he broke that down clean. He yeah. said, if you're really sincere, because if you're playing with it, then it's just a waste of time, right? Yeah. Yeah. Now let me tell you, put a little bit of fear of Yahweh on all of us. Yeah. Come over here, son. Now I raised my seeds up in this truth, Con. Yeah. 
God. That's his son right there. You feel me? And those are his daughters right there. And and this is our family. Those who keep the commandments. Give me that. My family are those who keep the commandments. And then we'll, we'll let you slide. But watch this, King. Revelation chapter 2, verse 21. Read it out loud. And I gave her space to repent of her Hold on a second. Watch this. I have to clear something up. Israel is considered a her in the Bible. You know why? Because we're married to God. All right? So so he's he's the one that made a uh, commitment, a marriage contract with us, and we broke it. We went a whoring. And then let's get Numbers 1538 if somebody got it. All right, watch this. Go ahead. Of her fornication. Started from the beginning. And I gave her space to repent of her fornication. So he's giving you some time. But that duration is coming to an end. Come on. It's coming to an end. And, and there ain't going to be no more choice no more. When that door shut, that black man we was talking about, he going to show up and he ain't going to be happy with all of us whoring around. That's right. That's what's going to happen. Is that it on that? Bring it out from the top and read it from the beginning and call it out. Revelation chapter 2 verse 21. Now that's the last book of the Bible, Revelations, right? Yeah. So he's saying, hey, hey, this thing about this, I'm going to give you some time because I know you are hard-headed and stubborn people. Yeah. And I know I whipped your butt so you're mad at me. Yeah. And I gave her space to repent of her fornication. Of her what? Of her fornication. That means we cheated on him and got with these heathens. Okay. And she repented not. And she repented not. You think those folks over there going to repent? They're going to have sex with a woman that ain't married to them. They're going to do everything under the sun that the Most High hates. So in this space to repent, we need to come out here and let them know, hey, turn from your wicked ways. Come back to the law, statutes, and commandments, Israel, because it's coming. It's coming. And we're telling our people that. Hey, God, what do we got, King? All right, now watch this. Now I got family, blood family. But hey, I've had family rob me. Believe it or not, I had a family put a hit on me one time. Watch this. This is the book of Luke, chapter 8 and verse 20. 20. And it was told him by a certain. It's like it. And it was told him by a certain which said, Thy mother and thy brethren stand without desiring to see thee so they're saying hey your uh blood mama and your blood brother standing right there they desire to see you christ what's going on with you and he answered and said unto them my mother and my brethren are those which hear the word of god uh, and do it uh, and what and do it so hey you could have all kinds of people saying hey i'm your i'm your biological daddy now let me molest you real quick this world is toe up. A lot of our people are burnt because they done been through it, so we feel for them. Even that dude coming over here talking crazy, that ain't the first brother run up on us acting like a maniac. This ain't new to us. We know. We know how wicked this world is. One more time, huh? If you got it. And he answered and said unto them, My mother and my brethren are these which hear the word of God and do it. So everybody out here is doing the word of God. We love our brothers, right? You can tell this ain't, this is genuine, this ain't fake. We got tested, we stand firm, we're still here. That's right. And then when we pack up here, we're gonna go continue loving each other back at the that's ox right. house. And believe me, ain't nobody running up over there because that's a different story. Oh, you feel me? So I'm gonna tell you right now, we're not playing around in this thing. This is a war thing. Right. This is a war and I, we're gonna pray for you. What's your name, King? Kali. Kali, I'm Barack. That's Yahweh, that's Eliakim, that's Yehoshua, and that uh, is, and that's uh, my son right there, uh, little Daniel Allah. And I'm going to tell you right now, every one of us going to lift prayers up for you, King. Be sincere, you got that contact, and with that, we're going to say, Kwame Yashallah. Kwame Yashallah! Brock, let me give him one thing. Oh, okay. hey, when, the, when, when the elder speaks, I can best get that one. Yes, sir. Yeah. You would want to know what the, what the precept was, and I don't know if we got all the way there. So precept is when you read one of the oracles of the Most High. You got that? Yeah. So, look, how I showed you what John 8 and 32 was, and you should know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. It took you a precept to that, 
to give you the understanding of what that's talking about, we went to Isaiah uh, chapter four. I'm sorry, Psalms chapter one nineteen, verse one forty two. Thy righteousness is the everlasting righteousness, and the law is the truth. And if you wanted to know what the righteousness of Yahweh is, is Psalms. So we're going to go from that, from Psalms chapter one nineteen, verse one forty two, all the way to Psalms chapter one nineteen, verse one seventy two. All thy righteous commandments are truth. So it's the law. It's basically the law. But I'm going to I'm going to show you something. Why it's so important that we read from the precept. So we're just going to jump all over the Bible. It, once you keep in the commandments and you have a, um, gives you the understanding, a good understanding, you're going to know how to do that thing. Right. So re check this out. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 28, and verse 9. Whom shall he teach knowledge, and whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the bread. For precept must be upon precept. Precept upon precept. For precept must be upon precept. Precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. You see how we're going here a little bit, there a little bit. I went from John 8 and 32 all the way up to Psalms 119 verse 142, all the way up to Psalms 119 verse 172. So he says precept, this is a commandment. He said precept must be upon precept. Precept upon precept. So it's so strong that he reiterated precept must be upon precept. Precept upon precept. Line upon line. When you read line upon line, that just means when you read in the Bible, you don't just read a little narrative of it. You got to read it in its full context. And then it causes you, it says here a little bit, there a little bit. You may have to go to Revelations. You may have to go to Isaiah. You may have to go to Ezekiel. And that, and that through that way, you're going to get to understanding. Con? So when we go to Psalms 119, verse 104, it says, through thy precepts, I get understanding. Therefore, I hate every false way. There's no other way to do it. Right. You're not going to get to understand it. So when you, you know, you go to church, they're just going to read the Bible straight through. They may give you a right. timeline. They may give you a story. But uh, the only way you're going to get the true understanding is if you're keeping the commandments of Yahweh and you do it through thy precepts. Con, do you got to understand what the precepts are? I got a full understanding. Con, All praises, all praises. All right, brother. That's right. Get us, man. I got the number and I got it. Straight up. Hey, use that. Don't, hey, you hurt yourself if you don't use it. Oh, cool. Yeah. Hey, and a lot of brothers going to be praying for you. You think we just praying for you? We waking up worldwide, King. And so as soon as they see you showing that authority, as soon as they see you showing that desire, they'll be like, man, those are the same questions I have. Man, and, they, and he got answered out there. And I'm going to tell you like this. When you watch a movie, right? Sometimes people fast forward to the end of the movie and they see what happens. We know what happens at the end of the movie. Yeah. The you know what happens at the end of the movie? What Israel that? rises. That's right. Israel rises. Hey. We get everything. Hey, and can't nobody even look at us cross-eyed when it's set up. Like right now, when that police officer came, hey, he toned down. I'm gonna run through the brick wall. Con, con, you got something? This is the book of Second Ezra, chapter six and verse nine. For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. Con, King. We're the next thing to come. We're the hottest thing on the block. That's why we post up and bring it out tough. Because we love our people. Oh, he got it. Oh, hey, Mike, what's hey, up? Right. Yeah. Who's Esau according to the scripture? According to the scripture, Esau is in rule right now being evil as the white man. And, and Jacob is the so-called 12 tribes of Israel, which consists of the so-called Negroes, the so-called Hispanics, and the so-called indigenous. How do we know? Look at history. Who's been oppressed? Who had their foot on our neck? Who's had their foot on our neck for the hundreds of years? Bring it out. Bring it out. Go ahead, huh? Second Ezra, chapter 6 and verse 9. For Esau is the end of the world. The end of the world. And Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. Everlasting. You hear that? 
We on our way, we rising up and they know it. That's why this country's falling apart. All this COVID garbage, they finna lock this shit down. Who playing out here? The most I ain't playing. He, he been destroying us. You know them slave ships? That was the most high. That's in the Bible. When the white man came here and killed the natives, that's in the Bible. Everything we saying is in the Bible. And now we kill each other. We can't even come out here and spit the word of God without getting a death threat. Had a deadly shooting in Antioch. And police found a man dead in an apartment complex parking lot. Mo Hyder at the South Precinct Force this morning. And Mo, have there been any arrests? A simple outing just to get some dinner turned deadly. A shooting happened late last night at the Weatherly Ridge Apartments in Antioch. All right, investigators say the victim went out to get some food for he and his girlfriend, and when he came back, he was shot just outside the door to the apartment. The girlfriend heard the gunshots, looked out the window only to see her boyfriend bleeding there on the ground, and the gunman bent over, taking his belongings. Now, the victim here was taken to the hospital where he later died. Police still have not yet released any description of that shooter. We know who the most high God is. And with that, are we going to sign out with a Kwame Ashala? All right, on three. One, two, three. Kwame Ashala! Cheesecake. <laughs> Sensational. Navy, line up.